For my next trick, I need a shuffle pack of playing cards. And I need a helper card, which will be, let's see, the ace of spades. Okay, and it is going to rest on the table for a second now. At this point, I need you to touch any card. Let's say you want to pick the seven of spades. Once you have picked your card and signed it if you want to, we're going to take it and cut it roughly into the center of the pack. To make sure that you, as a spectator, did not keep track of the card, I'm going to give the cards a second shuffle here. Okay, so I know that you don't know where the card is. It could be on the bottom, on top, in the middle, top third, bottom third. You never know. Now, please go ahead, take the Ace of Spades, leave it facing down. In a moment, you're going to take it and place it into the center. You could place it on top of the Queen of Spades, Ten of Diamonds, Seven of Diamonds. You never know. I'm saying you never know because I'm going to hold the pack so you really don't see where you place it. So take the Ace of Spades place it roughly into the center of the pack. Now, would you be impressed if the Ace of Spades was now either on top or beneath your selected card? You would be? Okay, please tell me was either the Ace or the Seven of Diamonds your selected card? They were not. Okay, I think I did hear a mistake. Now, let's cut these two cards back into the center of the pack. Now, you know what? I just told you that the Ace of Spades would find your card. And I think the Ace of Spades did a great job by changing into the Seven of Spades. And I believe the Seven of Spades was your selected card. Maybe one more thing I should, uh, I should have told you at the beginning. The Ace of Spades is not a card that has the ability to change to any other card. This whole thing was just an illusion. If you just wait a few seconds, I know that I don't have a watch, but if you wait some seconds, you should witness that the Seven of Spades changed back to its origin to the Ace of Spades. The card we started the trick with. You know what? Let's finish the trick with one more thing, okay? At the beginning I told you you're going to take the Ace of Spades, keep it facing down, you're going to place it into the middle of the pack and you will find your card. If you had really magical skills, you would be able to estimate where the selected card would be, place the facing down card into the middle, exactly beneath the seven of spades, your selected card. So here is the explanation. Before we start, for this trick I'm just using a standard bicycle deck. These type of decks, standard decks, are available on a very nice magic shop, probably for my German viewers here, uh, called itsmagiczaubershop.de. Again, for the German uh, audience here watching my videos, it is a very nice magic shop where you can buy standard decks, tricks, DVDs, gimmicks, for the best price possible, I think. So if you're interested in buying something, a magical product, go ahead and check out their website first. And I'm pretty sure you will find something for yourself. So it's magic shop. It's magic Now let's see the explanation for this whole routine. So the explanation. I think this routine is a very nice routine you can really add to your um, own routines. Okay, It is a routine consisting of three different effects and we found gimmicks just impromptu. Okay? To start off, you have a shuffle pack of playing cards. You shuffle them, spread them and you say that you will need a helper card, the ace of spades and place it facing down on the table. Now you have a card selected. You have it signed if you want to, and you lose it inside the middle of the pack, and of course you just control it back to the top. In this case, I used the slip jock, which you can find on my channel. Now, you have to um, shuffle the cards one more time, and your, uh, reason for it, and your reason for doing that is that you don't want the spectator to keep track of the card. And as you're seeing all those things, you do a shuffle, and then you perform the Browie reversal, okay? 
and a, uh, an explanation for that is also on my channel, just check out the description box below. By doing the Broadway reversal, you have all the cards now facing up except for one of them on the bottom, which is their selection. Now you say that they should take the Ace of Spades, and in a moment they're gonna place it into the center. They could place it on top of the Ten of Diamonds, the Ace of Hearts, Nine of Clubs, you never know. And as you're saying this, you really uh, cut about a half of the pack on the table. Instead of cutting a half of the pack on the table like so, you do it in sequences. Okay, so you have a purpose for cutting to that. Okay, then you complete the cut. By doing that, the facing down card basically is in the center of the pack. Okay, right here. Now, you ask the pack here to take the Ace of Spades and you say that you're gonna hold the pack so they don't see where they place the Ace of Spades. However, don't mention that they are gonna place it either on top or beneath the card because that's not the trick. You just say that the Ace of Spades will find their card. They place it roughly to the center, okay? And you basically take it and they won't be able to push it flush into the pack since your middle finger is blocking the card. You're gonna say, okay, wait a second. You're gonna take it and side jog it like so. So you can see about a half of the card right here. Okay, and your purpose for adjusting the card is basically to show them clearly that the card is in the center. Now you say, would you be impressed if the card was either underneath or be, uh, above your selection? As you are seeing this, you start to spread the pack towards the side jogged card. By doing that, the card you had at the beginning here, the secretly loaded card, is visible and the card, the Ace of Spades, is now hidden underneath the spread. Okay, that's the beauty of this move. Now you take the card underneath and above the seemingly Ace of, Ace of Spades, which is in fact the Three of Diamonds, and you close the spread and hold the pack facing down in your hands. Ask the pack here, is either the Ten of Diamonds or the Queen of Hearts yours? They will say no. Now you act like you did a uh, mistake and as I'm doing this I riffle through the cards and I'm like kind of looking for the mistake. However, what I'm really doing is I look for the Ace of Spades which is facing up in the center right here and I add one more card on top of it and catch a break above it. Now I cut the cards above the break, now here the cover card with the Ace of Spades and my purpose for cutting the dag is that I want to get rid of these cards, like so. Now I control the Ace of Spades to the second position from the top with a cover card. At this point I talk, talk, talk and reveal that the Ace of Spades become, became the Three of Diamonds. As I reveal this, I catch a break underneath the Ace of Spades, so the top two cards. Place the Three of Diamonds on top as I'm talking and I say it was the Three of Diamonds yours? Yes, great. And I do a triple lift, like so. Now this card is again back the Ace of Spades, and here I have a random facing up card. Now I have to place the Ace of Spades on the table without revealing this one. To make this happen, you lift this up and do a wrist kill, okay? Or, as in my performance, I turn my hand away from the spectators, I push the card on the table, and at the same time turn it out the pack so I block the view. So you can do whatever you want. However, now you have here the Ace of Spades, they still think it's their selection. You're gonna pick up the pack and say, you know what, this whole thing was an illusion. You snap your fingers, it becomes back the Ace of Spades and you have the second trick in your routine. As I'm looking here, just give the cards one cut. By doing that, there will be a facing down card underneath the Three of Diamonds, your selection. However, they do not know that. Now, you cut the cards into the pack, hold them facing down, and say, you know what, one last trick I want to show you. At the beginning, and you explain the trick, you explain them to, uh, at the beginning, you say we had a facing down card, and you don't show this card to them, just take the top card, leave it facing down, you say, we had a facing down ace at the beginning, and you were meant to place it into the middle of the pack to find your card. If you really had magical skills, it would look something like this. You take it 
and do the exact the same thing, place it into the middle, leave it side jog, spread the cards, and the facing down card will be underneath the three of diamonds. There's a the action. At this point, you could reveal the facing down card since they did not see it at the beginning. Of course, you do not end up clean, even though you have your very clean display. However, since it is the end of the routine and maybe of your whole show, you can just put these cards together and as you're talking to them, just cut the random facing up card now back to the top with a cover card and whenever you have the opportunity, just turn it back around and you're done. And this is basically the explanation for this whole routine. It is actually a very simple routine with with, I mean, it involves sleight of hand, but uh, not the hardest moves. I'm pretty sure you can make it to your own routine and perform it whenever you have a uh, situation, a moment where you can sit on the table, have audience in front of you. I think this is a beautiful piece of magical tricks, combination, mixture, whatever you want to call it. That's been said. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I see you next time.